one of the things I, I like about your career is that you've embraced horror. Uh, unlike a lot of actors, you are unafraid of it and you've taken it on oftentimes and obviously in your early career, but you're still a part of it. You're still doing it. What was the appeal for doing the cleansing hour and what with this character specifically? Just kind of just talking about horror real quick. I, I what I'm happy about is that I feel I feel like the stigma around it is kind of gone a little mm. bit. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I feel like back when I was younger when I did it, not that anybody was like giving you a hard time for it, but like, you know, people weren't like throwing you job offers based off of the horror movie that you made. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I like I feel like there's a different there's like a different love for it within the industry now. Not 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 within the community. The community's always been, you know, rap. They they love horror. Like it's just is what it is, you know. It's like the most I think other than like comic book fans, it's it's maybe it's like if if not it's either equal if not more you know a rabid fan base than absolutely anything else, um, and that's where I've you know I've gotten a lot of my support from, which has been really great. So I owe a lot, I owe a lot of you know my career to the horror community um, and and the people who watch the films, and I think I think there was something there was just something kind of, there was just something different about the cleansing hour. You know, it was a possession film. I got sent to me. I was like, okay, it's possession film, you know, so your head kind of automatically goes to like, all right, it's probably going to hit this beat, this beat, this beat, you know, and that's, that's cool, but let's read it. And then I read it and I got done and I was like, this is totally not what I thought this was going to be. You know, I thought the social commentary was really cool, uh, especially, you know, now I think it's, it's really important. I like, you know, the extreme version of it. Um, I thought the relationships were really good. I thought the writing was fun and funny and dark. Um, I thought the gore was there. The violence was there. It, it kind of, it checked like all the boxes of things you want, you know, within, within a film like that. And then, you know, and then I talked to Damien and he was talking to me about the effects and he was talking about how he's going to try to do as many of them practical as he can, which I thought was really cool. And I, you know, I love that. So it was one of those things that, you know, when it became time to like say yes or no to the film, it was like, this is just going to be fun. Like why this would be kind of dumb not to just go play and have a really good time making this movie. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head with it. A lot of times you see a horror film, you, you have the, the body count lined up, right? You know this person's going to die, this person's going to die, this person's going to die. There's, a, there's a, a legit kind of character quality about this film because you, we see you guys for a long time. It's not just you getting killed off. Right, and that was the other thing, too, that I thought was really cool is, you know, because of the way the, the set, was created it's basically like filming a play i mean we're in this one room like the whole time except for like when we go film in the the, you know the the bathroom for a second or when they cut away from us for those cutaways other than that it's like we are there so like there were never really any breaks you know there would maybe be a couple breaks while they did a little bit of coverage here there but um for the most part it was just like because we were all in that same you know, that same space, we all worked incredibly close together. And, and I think it really benefited the film and the character development. And also a big portion of what this movie is, is slowly like getting to know who these people are and what their sins are and the things that like, you know, scare them. And, 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 and I thought that was pretty interesting too. Like we're not just lambs to the slaughter, you know? Yeah. Well, what's interesting, and you you kind of also mentioned the the, the kind of social commentary, the kind of need to have views, to have hits. Right. And yeah. I, how do you, you know, and I, you know, I follow you on, we, we sure. do, the, do the Instagram thing. How yeah. much do you take the seri- that seriously, that part of your life and the, that, how many numbers you have and how do you think about it? See, the shitty thing is, is like, I, you know, I try to tell myself probably as much as I can that I don't really care, but there is that part of you. And I think it just comes kind of with the industry is like, it's important to other people. Yeah. Yeah. which kind of makes it a little important to you because you're like, oh shit, but what, I mean, you know, what if this is what these people are looking at to help make a decision or if it, that it, it almost like forces itself onto you and you're like, fuck, man. 
I don't want to deal with that. I got enough on my fucking plate, you know? So that irritates me a little bit. Um, Social media, I think is a gift and a curse. I mean, you know, you have people like there was that, like there was that phase for a while where like, it still happens, but like, I used to get so mad when I would see these like fucking idiots go into like gas stations and stuff and destroy them you know, for views. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like, dude, this is where people work, man. Like stuff like that, like people doing things like that for attention pisses me off. Oh God. Yeah. You know, where yeah. like you are, you are the ice cream lickers. Do you remember you're, them? You're putting, yeah. Like you're putting somebody else out. Yeah. You know, like I think this, I think social media has allowed people to put a lot of good into the world as well. You know, it's, it's allowed artists to share things they wouldn't be able to share. It's allowed people to connect that probably wouldn't be able to have connected any other way. You know, there's, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good things about it, but then there's also just a lot of toxic things about it. I mean, Jesus Christ, like you have people who are literally dying because they're trying to, you know, get the right selfie or get the right thing or like, you know, do the YouTube video. Like there was a guy who, you know, made a YouTube video where his girlfriend shot through a book and like killed him where you're like why why (laughs) you know like stuff like that makes me so mad i guess the level of fame that need for fame that need for attention right becomes so palatable and for intense for these people which is kind of what your characters do a little obviously Uh, yeah absolutely absolutely you know it creates this like you, you measure your worth by your likes you know, which is, which sucks, you know, and I think, I think of my kids, right. Or I think of, you know, the kids they're in school with, and it's like, this is their reality. Yeah. You know, it's like, they're growing up watching people post their greatest hits, thinking that that's their real life, you know? So it creates this warped sense of reality when really it's like, dude, that person could have taken that picture eight months ago. They've been hanging on to it. And for eight months, their life has been shit, you know, Mm -hmm. but they're just trying to make you think something else. And it, it tricks, it tricks you, you know, that like random kid in Wisconsin is like, man, I'll never be as worthy as that person who lives in California and does that. And it like the, that, worries me and that you know that makes me sad kind of for like the world and where we are right now um and that is a huge part of what this film is you know you have this guy who literally his whole thing is like he measures his his self-worth based on how many people are watching why don't i have that blue check mark why don't i have you know the fame that I think I deserve. Why, why don't I have these things? And, you know, he's willing to go to extremes to get them. So like, even at the end of all this good, bad, or ugly, when it's over, there's this part of him that still feels like he won, which is fucked. <laughs> you think, <laughs> you know, where you're like, Jesus Christ. It's, you know, I think it's, I think it's an important message rolled up into you know, a fun, spooky horror movie. Well, I think that's why horror has a, a a power that a lot of other genres have. They can take on very serious subjects and, and, totally. and do it in a way like this year's last year's <laughs> Antebellum was dealt head on with racism, and a lot of people right. weren't into it. But and I think that's important. I think that's it. It makes it palatable for people. I've said palatable twice. I feel really okay. smart. <laughs> Right. But yeah, I don't even it, know what I've said. I, I have repeated, no idea. I've repeated. I've repeated the. Sh- I've repeated myself. I'm like a parrot on loop. Yeah, no, it, it it must be weird. Well, let's talk about this. We can talk a little bit about this because it's we live. Um, do you? It, it must be kind of strange to be promoting a film when the world is on fire. It is, you know, because there's this there's this part of me that sometimes I have a hard time where. I think about what the world's going through and the struggles people are going through. And I think about how fortunate I am with a lot of aspects of my life. And then you sit there and you, you know, it's like as, as happy as I am to be here talking to you, there's this part of me that it's like, what the fuck? Like, 
there's so much else going on you know what i mean yeah. and you just feel stuck and you feel like it's like who fucking cares we need to like keep people a lot you know like but at the same time we are in such a space that films are a gift and an escape for people and these yeah. things are you know especially now i mean like people have fallen into all of these movies and tv shows and things as a form of comfort you know mm -hmm. so it's it's it is a strange give and take where like that that one side of me that's just so crushed and sad for the, the world and what everybody's going through it's like that that side of you hurts and you almost feel guilty that you're getting to be here and talking about something good you know like like yeah. it's such a weird it's such a weird thing. <laughs> I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I, you know, I, but it, it's, it is, it can't help having these good things can't help, but amplify the other side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's a strange thing. It's a strange time, but at the same time, you know, when the movie came out, so many people on like Twitter, wrote about the movie and how much they enjoyed it and how good a time it was watching it and like recommended it to their friends. And there's a part of you that it's like, that's cool. I got to put a little good into the world and, and give somebody two hours away while this hellscape around them is happening, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I tweeted, I, 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 after I watched the movie, um, I, I sent you a text <laughs> I'm saying this in the interview because this is absolutely true. This is a fan fucking tastic performance. You're a damn good actor, dude. And I, 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 I appreciate that you take these kinds of roles seriously and the kinds of work that you do seriously. It's impossible to love every job. You know, mm -hmm. some jobs you love and then you get there and it's fucking miserable. Some things turn out better than you could ever imagine. Some things are great all the way through. It's It just is what it is in this world. But for me, I never, I, I'll never show up to just give it a half-ass thing. Like, it's, mm. it's too disrespectful to everybody there. It's too disrespectful to the other actors, too disrespectful to the director and the crew and everybody and it's like you know and me saying this almost makes it sound like it's like i took this job because it's whatever that's not what i mean i'm just yeah. I'm, I, I actually i was excited to do this job i thought it was going to be like really really cool and fun i'm just kind of piggybacking off of you know what you said about the performance which i really appreciate but to me it's also like don't say yes if you're not gonna come to play Mm -hmm. don't waste everybody's time you know throw it, do the thing any any opportunity it's a, it's a gift to be on set you know any opportunity to get to do what you love it's like you know if you're gonna show up and be an asshole and not give it everything you got why'd you go yeah why you know? why make everyone else's life miserable hell for everybody else yeah exactly <laughs> um and that was the cool part about this man like Ryan was super game to play. And then Alex, dude, fucking MVP. I mean, she, every second of every day, that girl <laughs> bled for that movie. I mean, holy shit, man. <laughs> like, I was just looking at her every day like, oh, oh. You know, she gave it everything she had. And that was the cool part about it. It was, it was, a cool script, a fun script, a director who I really like, Damien's great, um, with a cast that was super game, knew what we were making, came yeah. in, made fun choices, did the damn thing. And, you know, I I think we have a fun, cool final product. I think you do. And I, I recommend it. I, I'm going to tell people about it. And, uh, you know, I... I Again, you're fantastic. The whole cast is game, like you said, and it's it's a joy to watch. It's a fun, smart horror movie, and I, I'm yeah. glad you did it, man.